What's up everybody? Today we're going to be checking out the Chavez Ultramar Redemption Street. Welcome back everyone, I'm Roel Shambo, and today we're talking shop on the Chavez Ultramar Redemption Street. Wow, that is a mouthful. Right off the bat, I do want to mention, this is not an unboxing, it is a review. Well, I do have the box for this, and I'll show you what the unboxing experience is like. I want to give a full disclosure that this is not a sponsored review, this was not given to me, it was not sent to me by a viewer paid my own cold hard-earned cash for this and I've had it for about five months now so it should be a pretty accurate representation of what you can expect from this specific knife in that time let's go ahead and check out an overhead view and see what you get right out of the box you'll notice that this is by far one of the best boxes I have ever received a knife in it's simple yet elegant it's clean and it leaves you feeling like you actually just spent good money on a knife on the side it says Ultramar on the top it's got this beautiful Chavez skeleton key check out the factory sticker if I can get it to focus this one is the black blade with green micarta handle scale now once you open it, you're greeted by what I would consider to be the show side, even though most people would consider that to be the micarta side. This, in my opinion, is the show side because you're greeted by this really garish skull head pocket clip that Ramon Chavez is known for putting on his knives. Now, I saw an interview where over the years he'd gotten a lot of feedback. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. So now when you buy one, you get a spare plain titanium pocket clip it is worth noting that no matter which one you go with these pocket clips are very aggressive it makes for a really tight fit in whatever pocket you put it in whether it's jeans or shorts or whatever uh, it will tear up your pockets so do be ready for that personally I don't know why anyone would buy a Chavez and not leave on that pocket clip it's just so iconic for his style of knife design. Now, when we take this bad boy out, you'll notice that this is the green micarta scales. Right away, you can tell that this micarta definitely has patina. It's a canvas micarta. It picks up the natural oils from your hands really well. And it's a chonky boy. It's feels nice and thick in the hands when you go to open it you feel like you're opening a knife and the ergos are great it's very comfortable in the hand whether you're gripping it like normal or you know if you like this ice pick type grip a few things to note something I'm a huge fan of is there's very little billboarding on here in fact what I would call almost no billboarding doesn't say Chavez anywhere or Riot, even though Riot did make this knife for Ramon Chavez. Uh, instead, you get this cool little skeleton key logo, with I'm, which I'm completely fine with. It doesn't stand out. It doesn't take away from the fact that this is a knife. It's just a bit of an ode to the designer. On the other side, you'll see that it says M390 right there. And I can tell it's M390 aside from that because it's held an edge the entire time I've had it. I have never had to sharpen this knife in the last five, six months, so take that as you will. The M390 is great. You'll see that it's a hollow grind most of the way through the blade, followed by a flat grind, a flat grind at the end, almost like a tanto. You could make the argument that because it has two different grind styles on the blade, it could be considered a compound grind. And of course, you get pocket studs, or excuse me, you get thumb studs, pocket studs, you get thumb studs on both sides. So even though this is not advertised as a left-hand carry or right-hand carry ambidextrous, 
They do at least think of the fact that someone could be opening this with their other hand because the thumb stud is on both sides. It is a frame lock. I almost wish that they had gone with a liner lock on this one because when I first got this, I beat the hell out of my thumbs. It's really easy to accidentally put pressure on that lock bar. And so what happens is, if you put any amount of pressure on there, you cannot force this open. You are literally fighting against yourself, and your thumb will hate you. That said, with a little bit of practice, holding it the right way, it's not too difficult to snap this open. Now, if you want to compare on sizes, let's compare first with the Spyderco Manix 2 and also with the Demco AD20.5. Keep an eye out in the future by the way because I will be doing a review on this AD Demco 20.5 and you'll get to see my thoughts on that. If you want more of that make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified when that video comes out. It's gonna be a good one. You can tell that it's got a thinner, thinner, it's got a smaller footprint than the Spyderco Manix 2. It's actually very similar to the Demco 8020.5, if not a little bit thicker. The presence of this knife is just fantastic. For its size, it definitely feels like more in the hand. And if you were to compare this, you can tell that it's a thicker carry than the Demco, uh, and it's more on par with the Spyderco. I would actually say that the Spyderco is a little slimmer carry. Get these out of the way. This is not a light knife. Expect this to be about five and a half ounces it's just under seven and a half inches overall, and it's got three and a quarter inch blade length. The blade stock thickness, and I did look this up, is about sixteenths of an inch. Um, that's what they say. It actually feels a lot thicker than that. I would say almost closer to a quarter of an inch. Maybe not that thick, but it definitely has presence to it. On the top of the blade, you'll notice this jimping. Puts, makes it really easy to find a good grip on here, a natural grip, and you know where your thumb is supposed to go almost automatically. It does have a swedge here at the top, so it creates some really cool flats on this blade. Now, when I buy a knife, and I have it for a while, the question I always end up asking myself is, if I lost this tomorrow, or if it was stolen tomorrow, would I go out and buy another one? The easy answer is absolutely. The hard part is, is that if this is lost or stolen, you'll spend a long time waiting for emails to come in, letting you know when websites get more in stock. It's not that they sell out immediately, but they do sell out quickly. Expect within the span of a day or two, any listing you see for this knife will be sold out the next day. That's just how it goes. Ramon Chavez designs are actually very, very popular. And I can see why. After owning it for six months, this is a knife that I definitely feel like I can depend upon. It stayed sharp that entire time. And Riot did a fantastic job on, the, on uh, making sure that the tolerances were good, that they were very consistent with things like the edge of the knife. The bevel is smooth and even all the way across. I haven't even had to strop this knife yet, which is just fantastic. If I had to give this a rating, I'd probably give it about four out of five. Uh, the loss of one star comes from the fact that this should have been a liner lock, not a frame lock. Liner lock would have made this easier to open. And after I bought it, I did some research and everybody runs into the issue where they try to grip it too tightly and they can't flip it open and they beat up their thumbs on those thumb studs. S aside from that small gripe, I'm very, very satisfied with it. 
I think that it's a piece that everyone should have in their collection, especially if you use your knives like I do. This will defeat many Amazon packages, no problem. That's about all I have for you today. If you watched this far, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. I'm going to have more content coming out soon. You definitely don't want to miss it. If you didn't like it, I'm not sure why you watched this far. Either way, we'll see you in the next one.